Hey everybody, this is a quick tutorial about how to prepare vector symbols for upload to the Noun Project, that really cool website that is cataloging all sorts of great symbols and you can be a contributor if you want to be. Okay, so today I'm going to take you guys through the creation of the floppy disk. Okay, and we're going to take advantage of the opportunity to show you how to use the Pathfinder and cut holes into shapes. Okay, the reason we're doing this is Noun Project has requirements about what they take for upload. So um, we're going to go through a couple of those steps and prepare the floppy disk. Okay, we're going to remake it today and talk about what is needed in order to have your symbol accepted um, for the Noun Project. So we're going to be working in Illustrator. And as you can see here, I've got this pre existing graphic, which is just one fluid solid piece. Okay, that is the critical thing. So I've used the Pathfinder, some simple shapes, and I've just sort of done this big stencil cutting sort of exercise, getting all these pieces and shapes to show up inside of the graphic. Okay, ultimately, it makes the symbol really easy to use. Uh, if you've ever downloaded a symbol and used it, purchased one from the Noun Project, you know that it's right and ready to go. I mean, you can put it on type, top of any sort of color, and this thing has a consistent outline, and you can see it changes color really nice, and it's just simple. That's the whole thing is simple, easy to use, ready to go. Okay, back to black. Let's get started in the artboard. Okay, and what we're going to do first is we want to set the artboard. Okay, I'm using the artboard tool and what you can do is you can put in dimensions. Let me get that. You won't be able to see the palette here, but I've got it at the very top. And in the W and H, the width and height, okay, I'm going to type in 100 px by 100 px. Okay, and if you get the chain on, it will lock it right into place. So Points is what I have set right now, so 100 pixels became 100 points, and that's awesome. This is the size that Noun Project would like you to make your SVGs. Um, that way everything is consistent and everything fits within a common space parameter, which is great. Okay, so let's get started. We're going to use a regular old rectangle. I'm going to set it to black. All right, and in my swatches, I'm using this black right here. Okay, which is pure black. And if you notice, you get the CMYK mixer. I want this kind of black that is 100% K and 0% all of the other process colors. We're not using process black, but pure black. Okay, and we're going to hold the shift key and quickly make a big square. All right, this is going to be the outline shape for what we use for our floppy disk. Okay, so if you Take a look here, we're going to work from the outside in, and we're going to make the little notches that are on the outside of the floppy disk. Okay, and really what we're going to be using is three shapes. Regular old square, rounded rectangle, and a circle. Now, there's a few rounded rectangles here that, because I have certain curve control settings, really it's just the default settings, um, Depending on the scale of the rounded rectangle, we get different effects. I'll show you what I mean when we get to that point. So first thing we'll do is we'll start with the outer little notch that's at the top of the disk. Now I'm going to change this to be bright pink. And the reason I'm doing this is so I can see my shape on top of the black. I, I had it set to black. It might have been a little bit tough to see. But luckily, Illustrator has all these outlines to show you where the vector points are, where they intersect. Okay, so right now, I've got the little notch that I'm going to use as a stencil. Okay, and if you've ever cut a stencil in your life, you know you need to have it in the right shape, and then you're going to guide it, uh, use it as a guide to uh, lead your knife, and then pull out that little piece that's right there. So it sort of works the same way, but digitally, right? It's a Pathfinder tool. So what we're going to do to get things going is first bring the Pathfinder palette into view here. Okay, and we're going to be going for this option right here, minus front. Okay. So I just want you to see that that's going to be the one we use today. Um, Pathfinder, if you're wondering how on earth to get it, it's always going to be here. Window, scroll down, alphabetical order, Pathfinder. All right, and there's mine. It's gone now. Bring it back, and hello. 
All right, so that's how you find your Pathfinder. Now it's not going to work unless we have two shapes selected. So what we want to do is make sure we have the little piece that we're going to use as our stencil, and then the big floppy disk outline shape. All right, so let's see it in action. Now notice these are overlapping. That's critical with this too. So we're going to click on the minus front option. Bam. Look at that. It's now cut a perfect hole into the back of the disc, and it allows us to sort of see through into the space. Look at that. Wonderful. Okay. So we're going to keep going. Now the notches on the bottom are different. They're not this square shape. They're more of a rounded rectangle. So let's um, put that into action. I'll show you what I mean in terms of how scale affects the actual sort of corners, right, the roundings. So we're going to go to the rounded rectangle tool and check this out. So if I make sort of a smaller, more rectangular rounded rectangle, I get this very much like a pill shape, which is great. So that's what the bottom of the disc looks like. So I'm going to make two of these here real quick. Okay. And then what I'm going to do is try and get these things as close to the center as possible. Okay. And um, what I'm going to do is I need to cut each one out one at a time. For some reason, Illustrator gets a little iffy sometimes about cutting multiple shapes. Um, but let's see. Let's go for broke and see if it works. So I've got now a box around everything, both of my stencil pieces and my background. Let's see if this works. Boom. Okay, cool. It does work. So um, sometimes Illustrator gets a little cranky and will say some sort of error or warning about too many shapes working at the same time. But hey, that was simple enough, so I suppose it should just work, and it did. So that's great. Okay, so easy. We just saved ourselves a second step. Now I think I'll go for creating the label, okay, which will also be a rounded rectangle, okay. But... I'm going to play with the scale of this rectangle. And the reason being is that if I make it small, it looks like that because of the, the curve setting I have on my rounded rectangle corners. They're very round, and that gets maintained no matter what you do. But if you pull the shape further away, it gives the space, uh, the shape more opportunity now to sort of like make the curve smaller. So watch this. If I make this bigger and stretch it out, well, I get something that looks a little bit more like a rounded rectangle, right, as opposed to a pill. So I'm going to get that to about that size. I think that looks good. But what I have to do is scale it down so that now it fits. So because I'm scaling down and I'm holding the shift key, it maintains proportion. But I now can take advantage of the sort of curves style that that big old shape gave us. So there it is. Okay, make it a funky color so we can see. Great. Okay, there's my label. All right. If you're unhappy, if you want to get a better shape, you can zoom out a little bit. I might want to get a little something a little more rounded rectangle. There we go. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Okay. And we'll scale this down. I'm doing shift, starting to scale, and then holding option. That gives me a center scale, which is a very helpful way to scale. And we'll place it in there. Yeah, that looks great. Okay. I'm just going to quickly tap that over with the arrow keys. I want a nice balance between here and here. Okay, eyeballing that right now, not going by any measurement standard. And we are ready now to cut this label into the shape of the floppy disk. So same procedure we've been doing. Click on the stencil shape, finger on the shift key, click the disk, and then, yes, you're right, we're going to do minus front. Boom. Perfect. Okay, so it's still continuously cutting into the shape, and this is looking great. We're the right color, we're the right size, and we're following the procedure that Noun Project has asked us to do by using the Pathfinder, okay, to make really responsible vector shapes. All right, let's now make the circle, right, where the reader for the film on the floppy disk goes. And I've got smart guides on right now, and as you can see, as I roll over, I can get these little sort of indicators about where the center is. Now, I would like to know where the center is because I'm going to, yes, center scale. And there we go. Make that thing a little bit bigger. Okay. And make it a funky color. All right, and there is now the 
center of the disk. Now, these things should be close to center, but I'm going to fix those later. I've got a little trick in the end to make those really line up in a nice way. Let's keep proceeding here with punching out now the center of the disk. Now it looks good. Okay, we're really doing a good job here. There is a tiny little hole in some floppy disks right there. We can punch it. Boom. And another sort of cylinder rounded edged, more pill like rounded rectangle. So rounded rectangle is here. And then we're going to go like that. Boom. Okay. Now before we proceed, I want this just like the center to line up nicely with what's going on. There's no smart guide that's telling me exactly where that is. So I'm going to bring the align tool into the mix and we're going to click on that stencil shape. We're not going to cut with it yet. Let me make it a good color to see. And then the disc itself. And what we're going to do is we're going to use this align objects. We're going to go with this one, horizontal align center. Boom. All right, but we're not going to go horizontal or vertical align center. We don't need to because we're not doing perfect center, just center in the, in the line of the circle. Okay. So now, because we like where that is, we're going to select that and then select the disk and punch it out. Wonderful. All right. Now, I did promise that we were going to fix this bottom part, which is like way off. This would be a very broken floppy disk. <clears throat> so what we're going to do is we don't need any of these fancy palettes. We are going to use the good old white arrow, which is the direct selection arrow. So I'll just get this into a better view. Select the deck direct selection arrow, the white arrow. This allows us to grab points, while the black arrow is the object selection tool. We can pick up whole shapes. Okay. Now what we want to do is we're literally going to draw a box around these little notches. Right? We really are imagining that like we're sort of lassoing those edges, right? So when we do that and let go, you can see I've selected now just those two sort of like train tunnel looking curves. And what I'm going to do now is along this line, tap to the left, tap to the left, boom. Look at that. Okay, and I can get it right in position. It's super close. It might not be microscopically perfect. It's close enough. Okay, deselect. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a wonderful floppy disk here. I think my proportions are a little off. Absolutely. I'm going from memory. Uh, if you want to get this just right, get a reference photo. Right? If you happen to have a floppy disk around the house, take it out. Look at it. See how it's working. Okay. Take a photo of it. Scan it in. All right? So that way you can then trace it inside of Illustrator and have the best looking because it's the most real looking for your icons. So as you can see, we have done it, all right? Using Pathfinder, we've created a, a big compound shape that has all these little holes punched out, and this will be a nice, simple icon for somebody to use um, and download and purchase from the Noun Project, okay? And you can see, simple color change, right? It really, it working well. Okay, back to black so we can stay on track here as far as getting our piece ready for Noun Project. All right, let me make sure that I'm using, again, 100% K, right? 0% cyan, magenta, yellow. Perfect. We're within 100 by 100 pixels in a CMYK document. We have punched out holes. This is one big shape, okay? Um, there's no strokes in here. That's one other thing that we have to make sure of is remove all strokes. As you can see, I've got none. I started that from the beginning, so I wouldn't get in trouble and forget about it later. Okay, but just remember, check your document to make sure that no strokes exist. If you do have strokes, convert them, okay? We'll do another tutorial at another point of explaining really pictogram design and getting that stuff going. But really quick, you would go if you had strokes to object and then expand. So expand will always reduce things down to simple fills, okay? That's the name of the game with expand. All right, we've done everything that we need to to get ready to put this up on Noun Project. So I'm going to show you now how to do the last step of exporting the scalable vector graphic, the SVG, which is the desired file format for a noun project. Okay, SVGs are great. They're lightweight. They're web formats because they'll render in the browser. And you can just download them and import them right into any vector program. So it's just like having an Illustrator EPS or PDF 
but it's a much more simplified file. Okay, here's how we do it. We're going to go to File, Save for Web and Devices. Right, SVG is a web format, scalable vector graphics, so that's where we're going to go. It won't be an export or anything else. It might be in a different format, but I go for saving web and devices because it's the easiest. Okay, it's tiny. Don't worry about it. It's an SVG. So what we want to make sure of, let me shrink this window down so you guys can see what I'm doing. Okay, is change from JPEG to, there it is, SVG. I leave all the settings the way they are. There's nothing in here that really I need to change. Okay, the version is correct. Everything is wonderful. We don't need to compress this. Okay, the size of this, beautiful, 1.308K. That's an amazingly small file size. One second at 28.8 kilobits. If we're thinking about a floppy disk like this, that speed it would not be unfamiliar those days. I'm so, so happy are over. We're going to say save, and now we can put this project into a location um, that we're going to be using um, for this. In this case, I'll just make a new folder here in this one, and we'll say floppy disk. Okay, crazy file naming there, nothing specific. We'll create, and then I will call this floppy. Okay. There's no file restrictions. I would just say, don't use any special characters. Keep your file name short. I think that's sort of just a general rule of practice, but there's nothing specific that noun project requires. Okay, so we will now hit save, and we have done it, folks. We've created an SVG. Um, I won't be covering how to upload once you get to the noun project. They have fantastic, simple instructions, but like I said, go head over to noun project, right onto their website, okay, log in by using your Facebook account, all right, I'm not going to log in here, but you can do it, and then under this upload icons section, all right, click that, and you will see how you can upload icons. I do know, and I will say here, that once you upload, it doesn't go up instantly, all right, Noun Project has some quality control. They will double check that your icon is, is really doing the job of being a good icon. Um, and also follows all the instructions that they've set up. Okay, I've had icons rejected. So uh, one thing that I can also say is don't use any text. Okay, um, pictograms and ideograms by nature should just be symbolic images. Try to avoid using any words or anything like that. I've had icons rejected because I've put words inside of them. But what that's done is that's forced me to really think about, well, what is the best image that represents this particular thing. So just some pieces of advice, but happy iconing. I'm sure once you guys get started, you won't stop. Making icons are a lot of fun. Um, and if you have any questions, drop them in the comments, but please, good luck. And check out my Noun Project website, okay, the, uh, the page that I have. I've got quite a few up here, right? You can buy these things and think I may make a dollar or something. I mean, come on. Who doesn't need matzah? Okay, everybody, come on, grab your matzah. It's wonderful. Or look at that, a 40 ounce beer. Okay, those two things should go together on a Saturday night and you'd have an amazing time. Anyway, have fun. See you guys soon.